Okay, so when you're ready, we're going to open our eyes and come back into the Zoom. So I'm very happy to see VJ from Ukraine is still alive and uh, joining us tonight. And also Bakhti and Hanuman from Ukraine. And tonight we have Kate, who's going to do a Russian translation or Ukrainian, I should say, translation. So maybe we particularly focus on Ukraine today, because as you all know, uh, this is in the last few days was the two year anniversary of the tragedy that has happened to Ukraine. It's, it's amazing. Tonight I was watching just a short interview, well, not an interview, it was a speech. Putin made a speech. I think every year he makes a speech to the whole of Russia uh, with maybe some journalists asking him questions, something like that. And he was, he was giving a speech where he was talking about the most important thing for Russia was so sovereignty, the sovereignty of Russia. And of course, he's completely abused the sovereignty of Ukraine over the last two years. So to hear him talking, I mean, it's unbelievable, really, how, how he even dares to say some of these things. Because then later in his speech, he was talking about for the citizens of Russia, how important it was that they had freedom and democracy. Ha ha ha. I think all of you know that in the last, uh, I think about a week ago or 10 days ago, there was a man who had been um, the main opposition to Putin over a number of years, who would have wanted to stand as the president. But some years ago now, he was uh, poisoned. His life was just saved by flying him to Berlin. And then, for whatever reason, he had the courage or not to go back to Moscow, where he was immediately arrested. And over the last years, he's been in different prisons. And um, it seems pretty clear that in the last uh, time, uh, he was simply killed in this prison where he was, in the Arctic Circle. Enormous tragedy for Russia, I would say because from my own understanding, he was a very good guy. He had a very deep sense of wanting to change Russia into a true democracy with true freedom and so on. And if any of you follow what goes on in Russia, because it's connected to what goes on in Ukraine, you will know that those things are a joke. Recently, for example, uh, after this man had died, there were various, um, how can I say, there were various shrines created in different cities, and people were going there with a, with a flower, maybe just one flower. They were putting this one flower onto the shrine, and then the police would arrest them for putting this flower on the shrine. And in Russia, this is called freedom. Ha ha. So anyway, uh, here in the Open Sky House, we have a little bit different idea about freedom. Because for us, freedom is that in any moment, you can respond to that moment without the baggage of the past or without the fears of the future. That, to me, is true freedom. That we're not burdened by the past and we're not burdened by our fear of the future. So true freedom for me is functioning in the moment, spontaneously, moment by moment. Maybe we talk about that a bit later, but now I would be interested anybody like to share what happened in the meditation? Uh, 
So I'd like to invite uh, Hannah Mann. I think we'll start off with the little Russian seg se section of our meeting tonight. Would you like to uh, share Hannah Mann? Hannah Mann, do you want to share? Ha ha So how's Hannah Mann? Are you got Hannah Mann? Is the weather still very cold? Как погода холодная еще до сих пор? Нет, у нас сейчас хороший климат, потепление. Ну еще март впереди. Последние дни солнечно, и мы очень рады солнцу. Nowadays it's getting better and it's much warmer. But uh, we, ha um, we have a March, which is coming next days, yeah, so, but now the weather is quite good. What's happening in a few days? March, Mer March is coming. March. Oh, March is coming. Yes. But I think March is, is nice, isn't it? Isn't it the beginning of spring or is that happening in uh, April? I can't remember now. Uh, в марте, в принципе, хорошая погода, как весна, либо же по-разному В марте может быть еще холодно. Мы обычно в март проходим, мы еще используем котел, не полный день, но мы про -про -про протапливаем к вечеру. В прошлом году было так. In March is still uh, cold, and it could be cold, yeah, and so we always uh, heating during the March, as usual. Right. У нас уже маленькие подснежники вышли такие. And uh, we, have, uh, we have little snowflakes everywhere. Мы надеемся, может быть. Все с холодами. And we hope so that the winter is over. Okay. And and where the, where the fishermen fish is it still covered in ice? А там, где рыбаки покрыты льдом, место еще или боже растаяло? Нет, ну лед где-то есть там на центре, возле берега уже льда нет. In the middle we still have some ice in the lake, but uh, uh, near the beach it's nothing. Okay, so where we have our center, which is just outside of Kiev. Um, there's a beautiful lake that comes off the main river that runs through um, Ukraine. They also have like the Ganga and like our Rhine and our place in, in Ukraine is also by the biggest river in Ukraine. So it seems that uh, we have some attraction for big rivers. Take away all our rubbish, take away all our unnecessary baggage. Yeah. Он сказал про то, что, в принципе, рядом с Триполием находится река Днепр, и что он говорит, что для нас, в принципе, видимо, есть как привычка, что мы находимся рядом с рекой, которая уносит весь наш мусор. Как в Германии, так и, в принципе, как в Украине. Везде вода есть. Right. Right. Я хотел бы сказать кое о чем по поводу моей ну, ситуации нашей ситуации. А, ну, поделиться, а, поделиться опытом, поделиться опытом. Yes, I want to share my experience and uh, to talk a little bit about the situation. Okay, go ahead. Uh, okay. По энеграмме uh, Ханман четвертый номер это артист и uh, мой жанр драма. Um, Hanuman uh, with Enneagram, he's number four, and he's uh, artist, and uh, he plays as usual in dramas. Okay. Ну, мой сюжет в течение последних двух лет драматический. Ну, в фон, в фон драматический. В связи с ситуацией вовне, ну и вот 
проходит такой процесс. And due to first of all external situation, uh, I have um, like a dramatic life for the past two years. Многие много много за это время произошло сильных вещей. Uh, I have uh, many strong things that happened to me. Но к, к этому моменту Хануман прошел хорош, хорошую подготовку под руководством, ну, под твоим руководством. И Джон Дэвид отставил ну, хорошие инструменты. And thanks for your uh, guiding uh, and your instruments that you gave to us. Uh, Hanuman made it well. The, the path, the way. Этот инст, ну, инструмент, инструмент. I didn't really understand what, he, what you just translated. That from the help he got from John David, he's managed to come through these dramas. Is that oh, right? Yes. Джон uh, Дэвид уточняет, ты имеешь в виду, что uh, благодаря инструментам Джона Дэвида и, uh, грубо говоря, поддержке, ты, в принципе, смог справиться за эти два года с ситуацией. Правильно? Да, этот инструмент yes. uh, заключается, uh, заключается, это метод, метод, как возвращаться в, в момент, как возвращаться в момент. И uh, для меня эти два года, это год... Uh, uh, год uh, ну, как серьезной практики, uh, где... Uh, у меня нет выбора, я uh, должен, uh, я, тол я только так, используя этот, этот метод, я могу возвращаться в тихое место. I was just thinking, you know, that if there are some people from your family or from Bhakti's family who could come for, say, one month to support Bhakti, maybe you could come here to Germany for a month. Он говорит, что, возможно, кто-то из твоей семьи, из семьи Бхакти, смог бы приехать поддержать Бхакти на месяц, а ты приехал сюда на месяц в Германию. You'd be very welcome to come if Bhakti can arrange enough support for her. Мне бы хотелось, чтобы ты приехал, если Бхакти смогла бы организовать поддержку на время твоего отсутствия. Мы узнаем, как ну смогу я выехать без детей. We need to check it out if I can leave the if I can leave Ukraine without children. I see, and yeah, that might be, might be a problem. Yeah. Anyway, if that could be possible, if you've got the right documents, you'd be very welcome to come here for a month. A month. Uh, если получится все провернуть с документами, то добро пожаловать. Он говорит, будет классно, если ты придешь на месяц. And this good energy, you, we can we can fill you up with good energy, which you can take back to back to. Uh, и можем мы тебя наполнить этой энергией, которую ты сможешь потом передать в дальнейшем бахте. I mean, living here in Western Europe, I think it's very difficult for us to really understand the kind of stress and pressure and drama that probably everybody in Ukraine is, is living day by day under this enormous possibility that at any moment something can kill them actually. Потому что здесь, находясь на Западе, мы не совсем до конца всегда понимаем, каково это, когда ты за дня день живешь, в понимании, что это может быть твоим последним днем. And being very old, I know what that feels like. А так как я очень старый, то я, в принципе, своего рода понимаю это ощущение, когда твой каждый день может быть последним. But actually, tonight I get the feeling you look quite good, actually. No, как мне кажется, сегодня ты выглядишь достаточно хорошо. Yeah. What What happened during the meditation? Would you like to share what happened during the meditation? Что с тобой случилось во время медитации? Ты хотел бы поделиться? 
Твои встречи, твои встречи – это большая поддержка для Ханумана. Находиться вот в твоем поле само по себе большое облегчение. То есть я могу чувствовать, как я захожу в начале тяжелый и в процессе встречи не, обез... не обязательно даже нужен перевод. Ну, перевод это очень важно. Спасибо, родненькая. Вот. I would like to say... Сейчас я переведу в секундочку, хорошо? Чтобы сразу. Я хочу, я, sorry, uh, I want to thank you because uh, our meetings, your meetings that you organizing is very helping me. And uh, just for example, in the beginning when I'm uh, quite heavy and I'm just started meditating, it's uh, step by step, it's getting lighter and lighter for myself. Good, good. И uh, что сказать? Пространство сатсанга, пространство сатсанга. Uh, я могу, ну, я знаю, мне это очень близкое, родственное это пространство. Mm -hmm. Пространство санга. Короче, не, не свежо. Um, and uh, satsang environment Uh, I feel myself very close to it, to this feeling. Right, right. Yeah, it's a really, looking at the screen now with all the different faces, it's like some kind of special kind of family, and we are really lucky to have this connection with each other. Да, потому что, смотря даже на эти лица, мы своего рода как семья, и мы очень даже счастливчики, что мы есть у друг друга. Yeah. Okay. Shall I talk to Bakti? I Bakti. see Bakti is sitting with her, one of her two sons, the younger one, I think. Yeah, papa. Papa, пошел. Papa. Привет. Hello. Hello. Hi. Ладоши. <laughs> Everything is good, thank you very much. So I'd like to get back to your... I don't know why she's not on the screen, actually. Oh, can you help me again? Why, why haven't we got back to you on the screen? It's not much fun looking at myself. Ой, э, в порядке у тебя просто э, сейчас настроят. Все, все тебя видят, просто он не видит. Everything is good. Uh, ah. you, your, your son has a different hairstyle. Uh, he looks a bit different tonight. Uh, 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 And we are just uh, let it grow because he wants to make a new modern hairstyle. Очень любит волосы, завязывает себе хвостики. So he he likes uh, different kind of uh, hairstyles and make a ponytails and so on. Ah, very nice. So he's in competition with mommy, it seems. Да, он скоро будет с мамой соревноваться по длине волос. Ah. Uh, how are you doing? I mean, I'm sure your life is also rather dramatic. Бакти, как твои дела? Мне кажется, твоя жизнь тоже драматична. У нас тут 
Очень драматично. У нас тут очень драматично. И хочу поддержать Ханумана, вот полностью согласна с ним, что вот то, что ты нам, то, чему ты учишь, это реально, реальный способ, реальное средство, которое помогает жить в этих условиях которая помогает не обращаться, не смотреть назад, в прошлое, которая помогает не смотреть в будущее, что будет, а жить вот сейчас, настоящим моментом. Uh, yes, I would like to say that there is a huge drama here, and uh, because of your support and your learning, uh, we understand how to live here, do not uh, hold this uh, huge uh, back of uh, in the past, and also not uh, to be afraid uh, of the future. Right, right. And how about your, you have two sons, yeah? And I, as I understood, they're living in the south of Ukraine. I, I'm not sure, are they living in the Russian part or they're out of the Russian part? А твои два сына, они живут на чьей территории? На украинской или на русской? Двое старших сыновей. Один живет на оккупированной территории в России, как бы считается. А один живет на территории Украины, старший. Младший и старший, да? Кто да, вот Илюшка. Илюшка, он получается в Мелитополе, а да, Данил в Запорожье. Да. Okay. Yes, she has two sons, and one of them he is living on occupied territory in Russia. And one of them in uh, on the Ukrainian territory. Okay, but they're both safe, are they? Они в порядке в сохранности, да? Да, все, все в порядке. Слава богу, да. Там же у меня внучка родилась же у в Мелитополе еще одна. Теперь у меня две внучки, две девочки. Ah, she has already two granddaughters. Ah, yeah. She's a granny of two, yeah, already. Okay, and tell me if you want to call to your son by telephone, the one who lives in the Russian part, can you also talk to him on the telephone? Ты можешь связаться с своим сыном, который живет на русской территории по телефону? Так, так, WhatsApp, Telegram. Yes, with uh, WhatsApp, Telegram they can do it. But not on the telephone. Но не по регулярному телефону. Нет, только соцсети. No, only social network. Ah, I see. I see. Okay. Okay. Well, I can understand it's not really an easy situation, but um, it's really beautiful that you and Hannah Mann have kept this center running now through two years and that allows many other people to come and do yoga or meditation or whatever in that beautiful place where you're living. And this is really a great contribution to the daily life of many people, maybe coming from Kiev or wherever they come, I don't know. Um, and people, people definitely need, need that support, I think. И это, на самом деле, очень удивительно и классно, что вы на протяжении этих двух лет поддерживаете этот центр. И, в принципе, что люди могут в основном из Киева, я так понимаю, приезжают. И вы по-своему даже можете оказать им тоже эту поддержку со своей стороны. Да, здесь удивительное место, это все признают. И э, большая помощь для людей, которые сюда приезжают. Просто само место, энергия, э, все просто, все говорят. Даже просто гости, которые не на ретриты приезжают, просто приезжают в отель, они ощущают эту энергию. Они говорят, мы просто отдыхаем. Yes, here uh, we have a magic place. Uh, even the guest who, has, who is coming not for retreat or other stuff, uh, just regular guests in the hotel, they also recognize that uh, the energy is quite good. It's uh, that's peaceful and restful. Right, right. Yeah, as soon as the weather gets warmer, I mean, it's just such a beautiful place by the river, by the lake, uh, in the forest. I mean, it's such a very special place you're living. Да, на самом деле вы живете в классном месте, потому что там река, лес у вас рядышком, все, природа. Okay. JD, что ты нас сюда такие вытащил. Thank you, JD, that you brought us here one day. Well, I'm happy, I'm happy you stayed, you know, because it's, uh, 
many things weren't going to be possible without you staying there. А я благодарен, что вы остались, потому что очень многие вещи просто бы не были возможными, если бы вас не было. I think now I should ask VJ because he's a very rare guest in our Zoom meetings. Очень редкий гость на наших встречах. Very, very good to see you, VJ. Классно тебя видеть, VJ. And how are you? How are things going for you? Uh, включи микрофон, пожалуйста, VJ. Включил. Получил. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> да. Как твои дела? Он спрашивает. По-разному все бывает. Uh, it's different. Right. Because you're, you're living in the city, Cleaver Rock, yeah? Cleaver Rock? Yes. Да, yeah, yes, yes. And this is the town where the president Zarinsky, where he was born, yeah? And if I remember, whenever Putin gets pissed off about the president of Ukraine, he bombs your town, doesn't he? Я слышал такую, типа, может быть, шутку, что когда Путин злился на Зеленского, он каждый раз делал прилеты по Кривому Рогу, потому что он там родился. Ну, бывает такое, да. Well, it could be. Has that, have, you, have you had any bombing since you returned? Были бомбежки с того момента, как ты вернулся? Да, были. Yes, yes, we had it. Не одна была, много было раз. Many times. Many times. Бывают дни, сирены гудят по три, по четыре раза за день бывает. There are some days that we have alarm, uh, like a three, four days pro, uh, per day. You have, like three or four times a day, you have an alarm. Yes. No, в основном хорошо его охраняют этот город. ППО стоит более-менее нормально. Но бывает проходят они ракеты. Uh, the city is well protected, but uh, sometimes uh, it happens. Right. So every night do you sleep in the basement or can you just sleep normally? Ты спишь в подвале каждую ночь или ты можешь спать нормально? Нет. Я Я не знаю, как-то ну нет вот этого внутреннего беспокойства, его просто нет. Я сплю дома, сплю дома. Я не знаю. Если должно произойти, оно произойдет. Ну, где бы я ни был. Uh, I sleep at home and I don't have this inner fear or just uh, I, I feel okay. If everything happens, it happens. Okay, good. But I, if I remember, you're, you've gone to Ukraine to do some dentist work. Насколько я помню, то ты, в принципе, поехал в Украину, чтобы зубы полечить с дентистом. Да, да. Probably going to the dentist is worse than getting a bomb on your head. Потому что когда ты меня пошел к дантисту, тебе на голову бомба упала. So have you got some new teeth now? Everything good? У тебя все в порядке с зубами? Ну, я сейчас забыл, мне делали операцию у гайморовых пазухах до этого момента. Сделали 3D-снимок, и потом нужно было делать, лор делал операцию в больнице. Окей. Uh, okay. uh, uh, he has an OP, operation, yeah, just like with nose, and I don't know how to say it in English, sorry. Uh, it's just something with the nose, and it's connected to the mouth somehow. Right, right. Uh, so you haven't started the teeth treatment yet. Ты еще не полечил зубы, получается. You were doing the nose. Вот эту часть, вот эту часть через нос делали, чистили внутри. И это все отголоски прошлой пломбировки, которую делали 20 лет назад. No, he didn't start it yet. Okay. So maybe you can write and tell me your situation with the teeth. Maybe we can help something. А ты можешь потом расскажешь мне свою ситуацию с зубами, может, мы сможем как-то тебе помочь. Yeah. Спасибо. Okay. 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 Okay? Uh, как в общем твои дела? Ты в порядке? Yeah, okay. 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 Well, nice Hello.
Quase Sim. uma palavra de estação. <risos> ok. Ok, so let's... Um, uh, we have a very nice film tonight, which is, uh, was recently uh, completed about a week ago. So this is uh, actually the second film that Carly has made on love. So let's watch this film on love, uh, perhaps two times though. It's only a short film. <clears throat> What is love and how can I practice love in my daily life? Love is not something to practice in your daily life. You see, love amazingly is your essence. You are love. Your essence is love. The whole world is looking for love and they never look for it inside. They're always looking for a new girlfriend or a new boyfriend, a husband or wife, somebody on the outside they can meet at a party, have a couple of dances and be in love. And it's just so sad, it's completely sad because if they would stop looking out there for a new, new something, they would discover inside this love. You know, it's a mystery. What is love? I never knew the answer for years. And then you discover your own essence is love. And your own essence is peace. It's an energy phenomenon. Okay, so that's a very simple, simple film. We'll play it again in a minute. And um, it's a very important reminder because it's extremely easy to completely lose track of the essence inside us. And it's very easy to get caught up in the outside. Of course, most of humanity are busy on the outside looking for love. Uh, and this love comes to them, they think, from uh, a partner, a relationship, or maybe it comes from a new car, or a wonderful holiday, or something. So this is our conditioned mind, which is believing, we've been led to believe that, you know, love is available from something or somebody on the outside. And in my own case, it took me many years of looking for love. I was looking for love. I was, of course, looking for it uh, on the outside um, and only through um, intensive meditation did I, after some years of meditation, gradually, it gradually came to me that what I was looking for on the outside was always available on the inside. So this is actually extremely simple, but I think it's very easy in the daily life to completely forget about it. I can imagine uh, Hanuman and Bhakti and Vijay living you know, in a country which is constantly at war. There are constantly sirens, there's constantly danger. It's very easy for them to get caught up in this enormous drama. So, as, they, as Hanuman was saying, I'm very happy that, that I'm able to offer these meetings through Zoom so that they can get a small support from us, us this community of people, like-minded people. And, um, and it feels um, you know, a very small thing, but maybe quite important thing for 
uh, Hanuman and Bakshi and their two children. They have two boys. Um, because, of course, uh, even when there isn't a war, the winter in Ukraine is pretty a pretty strong experience. I remember one, one year I was there, I think it was actually in February, maybe March, and uh, I'd gone into the, the capital, and then it snuff, started snowing, and before I could go drive home, there was so much snow that the roads became full of trucks and cars which were sliding around and you, you it took us hours hours to go home because the, the weather was so tough and uh, of course for me coming there i was kind of shocked by how difficult it was but of course if you're a ukrainian person you're used to that every every winter so they're strong people in ukraine very strong people very heartful people actually and um, if you would get to meet back to your and Hannah man sometime maybe in the future we can go there then uh, you would find they're both amazingly amazing human beings with a very strong connection to this love that was suggested in the film so what's being suggested in this film is that love is our essence this is always inside us and it's always possible to not look on the outside but to look on the inside and meditation is somehow the path the path of meditation brings us to this essence and when we come to this essence strongly then we discover that we feel the love we feel the same love that we felt in a relationship or when we got a new dress or a new car or something like this <clears throat> the difference between these two styles of love is that our essential love is always present always present and so as we do the necessary spiritual work after some time the thoughts the busy mind can't interrupt the power of our own essence and so it's perfectly possible to live day by day uh, moment by moment in this thing that i'm suggesting is true love and so maybe now we just play this film again and then after this film uh, if somebody like to discuss something with me, then you just shake your hand and we'll have a talk. <clears throat> What is love and how can I practice love in my daily life? Love is not something to practice in your daily life. You see, love amazingly is your essence. You are love. Your essence is love. The whole world is looking for love and they never look for it inside. They're always looking for a new girlfriend or a new boyfriend, a husband or wife, somebody on the outside they can meet at a party, have a couple of dances and be in love. And it's just so sad. It's completely sad because if they would stop looking out there for a new, new something, they would discover inside this love. You know, it's a mystery. What is love? I never knew the answer for years. And then you discover that your own essence is love. And your own essence is peace. It's an energy phenomenon.
Okay, so if you know, remember in the film, there was a moment when two little girls were enjoying each other and having a kiss together, and they had their grandfather sitting behind on the couch. <clears throat> but those of you who know me, who don't know me so well, I'd like to tell you that actually they're my daughters. I'm so well looked after by existence that now when I'm 80 years old, I've got two eight-year-old little girls. So this is kind of amazing. I'm 10 times older than my daughters. Can you imagine? <laughs> okay, so um, do we have any, any questions on this subject of love? Anybody like to dialogue with me about this topic? You can just wave your hand. Hello. Krishna. Okay. Can you talk and then we get you on the screen? Yes, uh, of course. Um, last night I had a wonderful dream. Can you see me and hear me? I can see you and hear you. You look very good sitting in one of our yurts with the frame of the earth behind you smiling a lot so it probably was a beautiful dream it was uh, with my brother together and uh, we used to have a lot of fights when we were very young like like boys are we were fighting not like beating each other but like uh hugging and beating the other down and going on the ground and of course, this was forbidden for my parents, so we always felt a bit, it was not so nice. Uh, but in the dream now, it was completely free and it was allowed. And it was really beautiful just to hug and to measure this power and have the other one so close. It felt a lot like love and uh, I never experienced like that, but after the meditation and the sangha it felt a lot like love it was very beautiful and raised strong energy right right so krishna was 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 here in hitoff in germany last uh, weekend and you're talking about last weekend i think yeah yeah yes yeah so um there's quite a few of you now tonight who will be coming this weekend we have a another weekend and uh Somehow when we come together, we start off very quickly coming into silence and peace. And then gradually as we um, sing mantras, as we spend time together over the two days, suddenly this beautiful love appears like magic. And it's very easy to project this love on the outside and say, oh, it's because of Pavati's wonderful cooking or whatever, you know, maybe it, the sound of the children or I don't know, the animals in our zoo or I don't know, there can be always many reasons we think. But essentially what we can discover for ourselves is that this love is always there inside. It's like a, a reservoir always present inside and when we're not too busy somewhere else on the outside when we can bring our focus inside then you have the kind of experience you're talking about <coughs> yeah. and uh, you know in the society we set up a society where we work, we have to work, you know, and for many people, this work is uh, not really how people want to be spending their time, going to an office with other people, having meetings, being on the telephone and so on. Um, and in fact, if you understand the possibility, this work can be transformed into a kind of offering to the divine. So sometimes people come to our community and then they're asked to do some simple jobs 
helping with the dishes or helping with the cooking or helping cleaning a room, some very simple stuff. And then maybe people are a bit surprised in the beginning, but when people put their energy into that simple job, very often people have quite strong experiences of what we're talking about now. They, they experience a connection to their own essence. And this is something that um, is very common in my years of, of living in India, because they, in India, this work, what we call work, they call karma yoga. So karma yoga, of course, sounds much better than work. And this karma yoga is, is a kind of free giving into some kind of project, into some ashram, into a monastery, or in fact, into open sky house. We do all these necessary tasks in a kind of giving. And this giving then has the effect to open us up and it makes it then much easier to connect to our essence. And we can come into our being and when we're there in our being, naturally the love just appears in like magic in a way. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Maybe somebody else likes to share. <clears throat> Maybe we, I'll invite Atma because she's sitting in front of a very beautiful painting. Can you say hello, Atma, and then we can see the painting? Atma, are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you, of course, in a moment, but um, I'd like people to see this painting behind you, because you see it's a big happy bird. And it's very interesting because uh, maybe two years ago, I met an artist, he was a lawyer, and when I met him, he was in a wheelchair, I, I've forgotten exactly what happened to him. But anyway, he couldn't easily function in his life anymore, and he needed to have carers to look after him. But he was surrounded in, in his apartment by these kind of paintings that you can see in this picture here. And he was always painting himself like this big happy bird. So in, in almost every painting, he had somewhere a smaller version or this very big version of a kind of happy bird, very colorful bird. And so this was very touching for me to see that this man who was a kind of invalid uh, and who needed a lot of support in his life, but nevertheless, he was painting these extremely joyful paintings. And when I got to know him better, I discovered that he had a very innocent, almost childish aspect to his nature. He, he had been, he told me, a champion sportsman. He'd been a, an important uh, lawyer with a particular speciality. Um, I can't quite remember what it was, maybe something to do with planes, I think. But anyway, um, so he was a kind of high powered guy. But although he was now probably also in his 70s, and even though he was disabled, there was enormous feeling of love from this man. It was so nice to go and visit him. And then we decided to exhibit his paintings. And he came to his exhibition again in his wheelchair, but he touched all the people at the exhibition because they felt this enormous um, love that kind of radiated out from him. It was very, very touching. and. We've got quite a few of his paintings in the community because every painting has this sense of, of color, of joyfulness, of celebration, all kinds of things that you can associate with love. So, uh, so you chose a good place, Atma. 
And how about Atma? Would you like to say something about love? You are, I think, our youngest, uh, the youngest person on the Zoom tonight. Um. Yeah, love is um, something very big, very huge, and um, it's um, it's very precious, and um, you need to take care of it. And I um, I don't I don't know what is love really. Um, I I think I will experience this in in my life, but um, um, I always see new aspects of love. Um, and how strong it can be. Um, I'm always, um, I'm every day, yeah, very much. Um, I see many new aspects of love um, every day. And do you see that the strongest experiences you have of love come from somehow you can say inside yourself? They're not necessarily from the outside. The outside is kind of how we've been conditioned to believe we find love. For example, I know that you love the bees, which, which you put into the beehives in the garden. We have, I think, three or four beehives, which you've been caring for now for quite a long time. And you have got them through the winter. Is that right? They're all still OK? Yeah, yeah, still alive. Right, right. So that that is your, also your love, yeah. That you, it it seems that it's not always easy that the bees survive through the winter. So it requires you as the beekeeper to care about the bees and to make sure they're okay. And if they're still alive now after the winter is almost finished, that's because of your caring, yeah. Which is you can say is your love yeah but this is yeah also a kind of love um also this excitement that they are still alive um and it's then in my body i can feel um that excitement um but it's very, very strong kind of love. Um, is um, it's more when um, in the meditation or when I'm connecting um, with eye contact, then um, I feel very strong. There's strong um, opening energy and. Um, uh, it's like emptiness. Um, I could feel today um, so much emptiness um, and falling. Um, but after after this um, this love connection, I felt very vulnerable again and. Um, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, you, you have many years to work all this out. You know, when I was your age, I hadn't even started to figure out about love. And probably it took me at least until my 40s to figure out about love. Because, of course, I was completely conditioned to look uh, on the outside for love. And in my case, I was always looking for um, a woman who, together with a woman, I would feel love. And that, that seemed to be how I would 
brought up to expect love and I never thought of, I never had any idea that the love was already there inside me. And of course, when you meet another human being where you feel an attraction and together you feel a closeness, then you can also play together. And this playing together also brings a deep feeling of love. And then the danger is that it's very easy to think the love's coming from the other person. And if you really look, you can see that the love is coming up inside both people and there both people can then feel this very strong connection together, which we can call love. And you were saying about feeling empty today. Yeah. So when we meditate regularly, when we're not so busy in our mind, we become very often quite empty inside. And when we become quite empty, then again, there's a possibility of the love rising up. Yeah. And this is maybe what you experience today, what maybe you quite often experience here in the community, that from your meditation, the thoughts become less, the ego becomes less strong, and then there is a kind of emptiness, and then maybe that gives you the feeling of peacefulness, and then just love is kind of welling up inside. And um, unfortunately, most of the time, humanity is so much busy with their mind that it, it makes it impossible actually to really experience love. So many people get married and they feel when they get married, they're, they're married, they're making ma the marriage because of the great love between them. But I would guess that many people come together in marriage, not because they experience a lot of very deep uh, love coming up inside them, but they, they meet together out of a kind of attraction. So this attraction gives them the sense that this other person is the right partner. And then out of the feeling they got the right partner, they then experience something like love. But this is always then dependent on the other partner. And this can not be so easy, of course, because over some years, many marriages experience that whatever the original connection was in the daily life, it changes. And then you don't feel love. And then you many times looking for love in another place and with another person. But you're lucky because you're rather young. And so you're in a way an open, open book for love. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very happy that I can experience to find love more inside me than in another person. And I have very, very much the feeling that I, um, this um, happened here um, now a lot, that I experienced exactly this. Right, right. Yeah, but you've been told your whole, well, you haven't been told probably, but you experience in your own family, with your own friends, going to parties, you're all, you've experienced many times what society says to you, or doesn't say it to you, but shows it to you, is love. And since you came to this community, and I think actually uh, you already had taste, a taste of it before, that's why you actually came to the community, that here in the community, we can meet each other by just simply looking in each other's eyes. And when you meet deeply through the eyes, then in a way you're meeting deeply with the other person's being. And when you start meeting in this uh, eye contact, which leads to the sense of, of deep connection, then it's like a, a completely different way to relate and it's a completely different way to um, invite uh, your own love to come up inside you, comes up inside the other person. And then, uh, I don't know, you can dance together, for example. For example, at the end of this film, 
this was something that happened one day in our Indian retreat. We were having a meeting and uh, we were up on the roof and suddenly it started raining very strongly. And then one person went outside and started jumping in the rain. And then another three people went out and jumped in the rain. And then they're kind of jumping together. They're like a, a rain dance. You can call it like a rain dance. Yeah? And they're getting completely wet, but they're having so much fun dancing together in the rain that I'm sure there was a, a moment when they all felt a lot of love inside. And this is just, in fact, from dancing in the rain. Okay. Any comments on that? Not really. Um, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I have a very okay. okay. Um, for the past days, I felt like I felt like this love, but um, it was independent of emotions. And when you just when you you just just describe the situation um, of these people um, jumping on top of the rooftop, um, this so this is love pair, paired with ecstasy. Um, but isn't love just is everything? Even when I feel anger or when I feel um, intense emotions or when I feel nothing, is isn't love just it's just my being and um it's it doesn't even i feel like this this love doesn't even have to feel good it's just there every even when i don't feel good even when i when i'm crying it's it's there even when i think it's not there it's always there so yeah. i feel like i feel i felt like this the past days yeah it's what everywhere what you're saying is that in fact everything is love so i'm going to get a poem that i wrote about uh, 30 years ago just a moment i get this poem <clears throat> So this is this is a, a book we published at the end of last year. This is a, a rather funny book because uh, the poems in this book I wrote in the 80s. So already 35 years ago, I wrote these poems. In fact, I wrote these poems when I was living in an ashram. And I was every day um, busy with a lot of meditation. And I remember that these poems would just appear. You know, maybe I, after a meditation, I might be sitting in the garden and suddenly a poem would just spontaneously appear. And I used to keep a little notebook and write them down. And uh, I never really planned to publish these poems, but um, in the last year or two, I've discovered them again. And here is one I wrote in uh, 1988. So that's, uh, yeah, 35 years ago or something. So this is called Love Is. Love is, on love is. only love is. Love moves the leaves in the wind and the planets in the universe. All is love, and you are this love. Authentic love is beyond names and forms, constantly there, ever expanding, ever flowing source of all. Everything rises from this love, and you are this love. Authentic love knows there is no me, there is no you. There is no separation. There is only one. 
There is only love. There is only love. Love simply is. So this was written a long time ago, but of course it doesn't really change. And if we really want to deeply understand love, we can go to some of the poets, like um, there's a poet called Rumi. He was living in Turkey. He was a Sufi and he wrote many, many poems to God. There is also a, a famous uh, Indian poet who came to uh, live with Ramana Mahashi. Um, his name's gone right now, but he was a very close disciple and he wrote also many, many poems. And these poems were all in celebration of Ramana Mahashi, who, who was his master. Um, and then there's another famous Indian poet called Kabir. I think he lived in uh, Varanasi, if I'm right, if I remember right. But anyway, it doesn't matter where he lived. But anyway, he was also a man who was constantly writing poems to try to describe love or trying to describe God. And of course, in a way, you can't really talk about love because uh, there is no real vocabulary. There's not really uh, sensitive enough words to really talk about love. So unless you're really a poet, if you're, um, how can I say, if you, if you have a deep sensitivity and a deep, um, how can I say, a deep uh, connection to language, it's very difficult for ordinary people really to talk about love. Is that also your experience, or are you also writing poems? Myself? Do you want to respond? Uh, did, did, you, did you ask the question to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you, actually. Um, On my screen, I've got you, so I'm talking to you. I got the poem to talk to you. Um, uh, so I, I'm yeah. asking you now, my question to you is uh, whether you can uh, talk about love. It's not so easy. No, it's not. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I can I can talk about it. Really. I, even I mean every even every word describes it, but also not like um, that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. But I'm not but, a poet. <laughs> for example, you've now lived in this house about three weeks, I think, two or three weeks. Yes. And it seems that it's difficult for you to leave. When I, yeah. met, you, when I met you recently, you were telling me about my studies and I, you know, I have to go back to my studies and you had all kind of plans for your studies. Yes. And I was told that today you were telling somebody that you're not sure if you're leaving anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I, I feel like I feel like this this community showed me this love that that is inside that is inside everyone that is inside. Um, that just is that uh, um, yeah it's I don't know it's it's everywhere I look it's it's um, I some sometimes I have moments where where I don't where I don't feel it um, and sometimes I have moments where I look and even I look at 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 simple things. Or I look at myself, and and there's there's not ecstasy, there's not there's not even joy, that, but there's just acceptance. There's this pure acceptance right. of everything that is. And it, like I said, it, it doesn't have to feel good, even when it doesn't 
I feel like it doesn't have to feel good in my heart. It can, it can feel good in my heart, but um, I feel like it's even when my heart is is like empty or it feels like that. Even then, love is there. Even even when I'm completely exhausted and I and I and I feel like I can't. And I feel like I I feel like I have nothing to give or nothing, or I don't want to smile or I don't want to. I don't want to talk to people. Even then, even then, there's love. That's that I can't really. You grasp. notice that when you cry, people are very concerned when somebody cries. You know, they want to give some handkerchief and so on, and they're a bit concerned why you're crying and poor you and all this. But actually, my experience is that if if there is a deep sense of crying. It tends to, it just happens. It's like nobody is crying. It, it can be you're crying out of a deep sadness, or you can be crying out, in fact, out of a deep joy. You're so touched, you cry, or you're so sad, you cry. But we have this facility of crying. And actually, my experience is that when you deeply cry, you it's, it takes you very deep inside yourself. Have you noticed this? I don't know. Maybe you don't cry so much. Mm, I do. I do. When I listen to songs alone, I do cry. Right. Um, and if, yeah, if, yeah, it goes. It, it goes deep inside. It's right. like a cl cleansing. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. All right. So uh, I think we're gonna stop very soon. So I would, I would just say that um, as I'm not going to Rishikesh, I will be, uh, we'll be having a meeting next Thursday and every, every Thursday in, in March. And I'm, I, I'm going to take uh, one of the um, books which we completed fairly recently and maybe three, four years ago. It's called The Pointless Joy of Freedom. And it's a remarkable book because for some years I'd been planning actually to write three books. I was going to write about uh, Jesus and Buddha and Lao Tzu, very ancient masters who had touched me. And then I was also going to write a book about people like Gurdjieff and Ramana Maharshi who were, you know, somehow living in the 19, uh, 20th century, 19th and 20th century. And then I also wanted to continue writing about uh, masters who are still living. So I was planning three books. And then one day I realized I'm never going to write three books. And I decided to put the three books together into one book. And so in this book, I've, I've chosen 30 uh, spiritual masters uh, and then we've taken quotes from these masters and then in my meetings I then discussed about whatever it was in the quotation and in the book we've also put a whole page for each of these 30 masters uh, giving their something about them and giving their website giving the name of, of one or two of their books so you can yourself if you want to investigate those masters. So this, this is a very is a very nice book. So in March, I plan to have four meetings where I will choose uh, one or other of these um, uh, these meetings that were I think they were given about four or five years ago now. Or five or six years ago, I, time goes so quickly. So we'll start that next Thursday. Anyway, I'm very happy to make contact again with the guys from Ukraine. Uh, I'm very much with you guys, even though we don't communicate so often. And the Zoom is uh, giving us a wonderful opportunity. We can see and feel each other. So uh, it's very nice to meet you tonight, uh, BJ. You better come and see us soon. Have a holiday in, uh, in Europe, in Western Europe. No. Okay. Okay. Thank you. See you next week.